Hey, Phil from Got Memories here. As I was uh, redoing some of these jobs here, I look over and I'm doing this uh, Hi8 and Video8 job today. And it's a nightmare because Digital8 is a nightmare. So when you see this, okay, and then, so look, but also this particular audio as well, okay, this is Digital8. And this is what Digital 8 does when it's being played on a Hi8 or Video 8 player. Okay, so now this particular customer... Okay. Okay, so at some point, he bought a new camera and... To, and this has happened on one of his other videos that I'm just doing. This is like one of 30 tapes. Okay, so started out as Video 8 and it looks like a Video 8 tape. Um, and then all of a sudden... He's bought a new camera, and you can record Digital 8 on a Hi8 or a Video 8 tape. It's just less running time uh, because it does have more data on it. But, um, so what I have to do with this... Oh my God. Okay, this is what why you need monitors on things and why... See, look, 1999, so like all of this footage... Grand Canyon, kids swimming, 1999, and then boom. At this point here, he bought a Digital 8 tape, a Digital 8 player. So I've got to capture that. I've just clipped off the end there. Now, what I have to do, see if I put this in, let's see. And if you put, I'm doing this one-handed, stand by. What I'm going to do is take a Digital 8 camera. See, so it's got that D on it. And then it says Digital 8 on it right there. I'm going to power this up. And I'm going to put that same tape in this camera. And it will... Same tape. There we go. So I'm going to put this in. Now, the digital eight, and then reset that. You always have to reset that pro this program on MacBooks, just in case. Um, okay, so now, where it was going, and now there's footage. Same tape, whereas most novices, like all these companies here, they're not monitoring, they're not checking, they don't have stuff. Paid stuff, you know, this they're paying anyone to be worth a damn. Um, but what I have to do now is basically hold my finger and rewind this for a couple minutes until the screen goes blue. Now, where the screen is blue, that's what happens when you play video eight or hi eight tapes in a digital eight only camcorder. Now, digital eights came in um, digital eight only. Um, they also came in um, hybrid, so you could play backwards compatible. It was backwards. Here we go. This was backwards compatible. So some digital eights are will run digital eight. It will record digital eight. Hi eight. Oh my god, it's so confusing. Um, so what I'm going to do now is once this is captured, I'm going to take the first part of this file and then edit them, merge them together to create one file. So it's gonna go in a neat and tidy directory. And then he's giving me all the chicken scratch on the back, which I'm gonna translate into the file name. So, very confusing. Um, I've got a video coming up here with the legacy box. We can't transfer this stuff. It's got mold. Let me give him that a clean. And then I have successfully digitized these videotapes that this company did. Um, yeah, so just a word of warning, if you are thinking about using those companies, no. Um, but Digital 8, Hi8, and Video8. Talking, um, Hi8 came out like 84, basically. Sorry, not Hi8, Video8. And Hi8 came out around about 84 on the Handycam, the original Handycam. This is it right here. This ran about three and a half grand in 1984, 85 money. I mean, absolute game changer over the big honking you know, regular camcorders of the day. But then um, Hi8 came out and then Digital 8 came out. So they're all Sony, they're all eight millimeter format. 
but they're all not compatible with each other. Um, but this was a nifty camera, you know. My dad had a, a, a company who used to rent these out. And they're just, they were just such a game changer. They still look cool today. Um, let's have a look. Boom. There we go. Look at that. Some cool stuff. Retro. Boom. Yeah. A little microphone. I remember the microphones when he used to rent them out. They would, they were all coming off because they were so flimsy. So people are renting them. And then they would just snap off. Or this would, the sock would come off. Um, also, these were very prone to humidity issues. So this was in Orlando, he had the business, it was called Rent-A-Cam. And so people would be in the summer, humid Orlando weather, and then people would be going to the theme parks, and then they'd be taking it from uh, humid environment to the AC cold inside, so condensation used to form inside, and then be back outside again with the humidity, in and out, in and out of air conditioning. And it would render the tapes when they would get them all done. Because they used to do them to video eight. Then they'd bring the cameras back with the video eight tapes. And then my dad, part of the business was obviously transferring it to VHS tape. Because everyone had VHS players, not hi eight players on their home, you know, movie systems. Um, and then they get them and we're like, dude, there's nothing recorded on it. And they're like, what? So when those video eights came out, there were a major problem with Sony. Um, and you know, so all the problems where people had rented a camera to capture their memories or their holiday at Disneyland and all that, Disney World, whatever, and then they get it back into the shop and they're like, eh, all your footage is screwed. So I remember those days when I was a kid. Um, but anyway, all the best to you out there. If you have Digital 8, Hi8, Video 8, gotta be real careful. Digital 8 is an absolute goddamn nightmare for clogging video heads because particles are coming off of them because there's no Freon in the tape. So microscopic particles are coming off the tape and clogging the video heads and then it just becomes blue screen. So you go, is the tape ended or has the video head clogged and it can no longer read the tape and you have to take the tape out, you have to clean the video heads. You might have to repeat that process many, many times throughout a transfer. And that is why you hire a quality transfer person, company, that has amazing reviews and hopefully a YouTube channel. So you can know, you know that they're actually doing quality work and they go through all these additional steps to make sure all your footage is captured. Unlike all of these companies here, which just send you back your tapes with stickers saying, can't get anything off of them. They're too old. There's moisture, there's mold, there's something. We don't like it. We're not transferring it and we're keeping you money. Yeah, so that's what's going on in this industry now. Race to the bottom. All these seven, eight dollar a tape transfer companies, fifteen dollars a tape, fifty percent off, sixty five percent off. They're all competing with each other to the ground in a nosedive because they're not able to get clear picture and audio because they're doing hundreds of thousands of tapes, twelve dollar an hour minimum wage, uncaring employees that, and then they just not you know charging enough to get the picture right or, or get picture at all to spend the time. What you have to do with every single digital eight is scrub back to make sure there's no pixelation at the end because when there's pixelation and this weird audio sound, then you know that the tape is gone to, the heads have gone to crap. So you've got to have the eyes and the ears to know what's going on with these quirky old formats to make sure that everything is going correctly. Um, that's it. So anyway, um, if you are trolling and you're thinking, no, you should be doing this to Firewatch, AI, da, 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 da. Read my other, watch my videos. Don't comment, <laughs> please. It's different when you're doing this in mass with people that don't want to pay anything um, versus, you know, if you're going to be using this for motion picture stuff. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, I covered all that before. Go to my other videos. Got loads of videos on that as well. All right. Cheers, bye.